Some call it a sea, others a lake. For decades, its status has been in dispute. Five countries want to share in the oil-rich but landlocked Caspian Sea. A deal's now been done, but will it hold? And will it lead to a new global energy and political alliance? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Mohammed Jamjoum. Five countries have now agreed the Caspian is neither sea nor lake. So what is it? The nations who have long disputed its status have agreed it has special status. Iran and four post-Soviet Union countries have contested how it should be split for more than two decades. Now they've signed a deal to share the surface commonly and divide up the seabed. The Caspian coastline is shared by Russia, Iran, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, and Azerbaijan. The new agreement will open the way for oil and gas exploration. Rory Challens reports. With the signature of five leaders, more than two decades of troubled waters could be receding into history. The dispute over the legal status of the Caspian Sea has been churning since the collapse of the Soviet Union. In Aktau in Kazakhstan, four of the USSR's successor states and Iran took a big step towards resolving it. Security and stability on the Caspian Sea are determined by the convention which we have signed. Naturally, it opens a wide perspective for the tight cooperation of the Caspian states for resolving economic and transport issues. These questions will improve the living standards of our peoples. We have shown in this convention that we stick to the principles of fairness. Although we did not determine the border lines, we marked that the countries with coasts of particular significance should take a special position. That includes Iran. The dispute has centered on whether the largest inland body of water in the world is a lake or a sea. Defining it a lake would mean the Caspian should be divided equally amongst the five countries. But if it's a sea, then each state gets a share in proportion to the length of its shoreline. The new agreement is that it's not quite either. Not a lake because of its size and not a sea uh, because it's not connected to the world's oceans. So the surface will largely be open for joint use, whereas the floor will be divided between Russia, Iran, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan and Kazakhstan, though the exact size of each country's lot is still to be agreed. At stake are several trillion dollars worth of oil, gas and pipelines. For years, the full economic potential of this has been blocked by the lack of a settlement. The US government estimates Caspian gas could boost global production by 27% over the coming decade. But it's not just about energy. Security is very important and this is what underpins our agreement. This region has an influence on Afghanistan, on the Middle East. This really affects the basic interests of our states, and we need to pull together to combat the threat of terrorism and transboundary criminality. This summit also makes the Caspian Sea a lockout zone. These leaders don't want anyone else meddling in their waters. No country that doesn't share the shoreline will be allowed a military presence there. Rory Challens, Al Jazeera, Moscow. Before 1991, the Caspian Sea was considered a lake and shared between the USSR and Iran. But after the fall of the Soviet Union, the emergence of independent countries complicated the issue. Iran says the Caspian is a lake according to old treaties signed with the Soviet Union in 1921 and 1940. The three former Soviet states, Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, and Kazakhstan, consider it a sea and that the seabed should be divided based on the coastline. Tehran had insisted the Caspian be split into five equal parts or jointly develop all its resources. None of its neighbors agreed. Let's bring in our panel. Joining us in Moscow, Stanislav Pritchin, an analyst at the Russia and Eurasia program at Chatham House. In Tehran, Fouad Izadi, professor of world studies at the University of Tehran. And in London, Lilit Gevorgian, a country risk analyst at the firm IHS Market. Welcome to you all. Stanislaw, let me start with you. The dispute over the Caspian Sea has been going on for decades. What is the political calculus that led to this? Why is this happening now? I think uh, it was enough time to 
finally agree uh, the key principles and key mechanism for cooperation in the region, and especially in circumstances when uh, the nuclear deal, Iranian nuclear deal, is under question after a withdrawal of the United States from this uh, from this agreement, uh, it was extremely important to show for regional cooperation that uh, Iranian neighbors are ready to support this country uh, in such difficult circumstances. So we can see that uh, this, it was enough time for, for negotiations and this is a good political time to, to sign this agreement finally. Fouad, what has to happen now? I mean, there's very few details as far as what this agreement will encompass ultimately. So what has to happen next? It's the lawyers that are really going to be involved, right? Uh, yes, both lawyers and uh, obviously engineers. Uh, there are going to be some uh, environmentalists that are going to be concerned about the uh, environmental implications of having uh, all types of pipelines going across the Caspian Sea. Uh, so they have to be careful with regard to uh, the environment, making sure that they don't uh, damage it uh, in, in a serious manner. Uh, I agree that uh, this was about time. You know, the, um, the Caspian region, the Central Asia uh, has uh, lots of uh, energy potentials. Uh, having uh, this agreement basically opens up the way uh, of making sure that the countries of this region can benefit from the natural resources uh, that exist. Yeah, and for Iran, I can say that uh, the prosperity of the other four countries is going to be uh, Iran's prosperity at the end, because uh, being part of a region with prosperous countries would generally benefit everybody uh, that is around. And um, Iran was concerned about um, security issues. A portion of this agreement uh, dictates that uh, no uh, country uh, outside the five that are uh, bordering the Caspian Sea uh, is going to be allowed to be present militarily in that area. So that makes sure that Iran is certain that countries like the United States are going to be out of uh, the Caspian Sea, which is good news for Iran. Lilith, obviously we've mentioned this already, but one of the issues at the heart of this dispute has been, what is the definition of the Caspian? Is it a sea or is it a lake? I want to ask you, specifically when it comes to maritime law, what is the difference between the two designations? Well, I think in the introductory segment, um, th th this issue has been uh, was covered uh, quite well. Uh, from the international law perspective, uh, if Caspian Sea is regarded as a sea, then littoral countries will have around uh, 12 nautical miles of territorial waters, and this will apply also to the seabed. Uh, whereas from the um, from the um, lake perspective, as um, Iranian side has been insisting, that there will be shared use of the reaches, so to speak. Uh, I'm, I'm saying this as a not lawyer, uh, but this is the impression that I've got following the uh, years-long discussions and negotiations on the Caspian Sea status. Stanislav, Russia had long objected to resolving uh, this issue about the Caspian. So what has made them more agreeable now? Is it uh, the sanctions from, from the U.S.? Uh, or is it the trade competition from China, or is it both? I think that uh, it was not just about uh, issues which you mentioned. Uh, this is mostly about the the uh, to finish this long-term process for Russia. This is important to have clear and transparent. Uh, legal environment in the south borders of Russia, to have the uh, pragmatic and transparent framework for cooperation in, in security, in fishing, in uh, shipping in this region. And that is why Russia was one of the countries which uh, uh, insisting uh, each time and trying to, to push this negotiation process. So uh, a breakthrough uh, happened uh, last December when there was a ministerial meeting in Moscow in December 2000, 2017 when Minister Lavrov, uh, after these negotiations, after this meeting, said that definitely summit will uh, happen in uh, the first part of 2018. 
So politically for Russia, this is very important to to sign this convention, not just for competition with China or in geopolitical struggle with the United States. Uh, Fuad, you spoke a moment ago about the benefits uh, that Iran will reap from this convention. But, you know, there are some that are saying that because Iran has the smallest coastline of the countries on the Caspian, that it is potentially the biggest loser in this agreement. What do you say to that? Um, I, I don't agree. Um, uh, Iran uh, is uh, benefiting from the agreement because if there is no agreement, then using uh, whatever portion Iran has is not going to be possible. So. Having an agreement, making sure that uh, Iran uh, uh, is the way of Iran actually accessing uh, the uh, resources that the Caspian Sea has for Iran. Uh, the second point, I think, which is important is that Iran has joint uh, ventures with both Turkmenistan and uh, Azerbaijan with regard to their um, uh, energy-related uh, industries and, uh, and pipelines and different types of activities. Uh, and Iran's expertise in these areas, given the fact that I Iran has been in oil business for many decades now, much longer than the two other countries, is going to uh, benefit Iran uh, as well. I think the third point is uh, the relationship that we are seeing between Iran and Russia. Uh, since Russians, uh, as you uh, described, were at the end of the day interested in this agreement. For some years they were not, but now they are, they are interested. Um, uh, Iran... Uh, after uh, the issue of the nuclear agreement, after uh, the U.S. sanctions, and after the fact that the Europeans are not really going to be able to do much with regard to the nuclear agreement, is looking uh, towards east, and uh, Iran is looking towards north, uh, where Russia and uh, these other countries are. Fouad, and, I'm, I'm uh, sorry, Fouad, I'm sorry to interrupt sure you, but let me, that, let me, uh, let me just... Iran has Fouad, sorry to interrupt you, but, but let me just pick up another point. Because after the agreement was reached, Iranian President Rouhani called it a very important step, but he also added that we should recognize there are more important issues that need to be addressed. What specifically is he alluding to when he says that? I think he's talking about geopolitics, uh, the, the fact that uh, Iran uh, is uh, under uh, serious sanctions. Iran needs to make sure that its relations uh, with its neighbors are, are normal and advancing. Uh, I Iran is looking uh, at uh, ways of going around the sanctions that uh, are, are, going to, uh, are designed to hurt it seriously. So making sure that Iran, uh, Iran has good relations with Russia, with Turkmenistan, with Azerbaijan uh, is going to be important for Iran. Uh, stopping these countries' progress with regard to their legitimate uh, rights that they have as independent countries is not going to be in Iran's benefit. It's going to be in Iran's benefit to be friendly towards its neighbors, especially given the fact that uh, Iran has serious enemies, and uh, making sure that uh, the resources that the Caspian Sea has is going to uh, provide benefits for all countries that are surrounding it is, at the end of the day, is going to be more important for Iran uh, because there are countries like the United States that are trying to choke the country and uh, you know, have a regime change. Uh, so at the end of the day, I think uh, Iran is uh, benefiting uh, from this. Uh, and um, a final resolution on exactly what percentage uh, of uh, uh, the Caspian Sea belongs to each country is not finalized. The final draft uh, is, a hint, is a sort of uh, uh, providing some guidelines, but the final percentage is not finalized. So if Iran mm -hmm. decides to uh, uh, make a point out of the percentage issue later on, mm -hmm. Iran has the room to do so. Lilith, Russia had previously objected to a natural gas pipeline being built across the Caspian between Turkmenistan and Azerbaijan. This would have allowed Turkmen gas to bypass Russia on its way to Europe. Can we expect that this would potentially built now, be built now? Would Russia allow it? Well, I'll go back to your previous question, um, whether uh, we have a, a, a definite um, resolution of the Caspian status. And I will start from there by saying no. And the fact that um, the Iranian side also mentioned that there has to be further negotiations about critical issues such as 
the limitation of the uh, seabed um, also uh, goes back to your question about pipelines. There's also an article in the in the convention about the environmental concerns, uh, which again creates this, the same loophole. If uh, any littoral state is concerned about the environmental implications of uh, a pipeline. Lilith, Lilith let, me, let me just stop you real quick. When you're talking obstacle. about some of the environmental concerns, you're talking about the concerns about the sturgeon, uh, you're talking about uh, the oil pollution, uh, what else might you be talking about? Well, uh, exactly. Sturgeon, uh, the fishing business is quite important, uh, not least because of the renowned um, Caspian caviar. Uh, there, has been, uh, there have been incidents of... Uh, uh, of pollution from the uh, already existing oil fields. Uh, so th these are uh, uh, the main concerns uh, w when we talk about the environmental issues. Uh, so uh, the, the convention, the, the last convention, uh, keeps in place the precondition that you know, certain environmental standards have to be met, but at the same time there is a degree of vagueness. I read the latest news as uh, no clarity when it comes to, for example, Turkmen Azeri pipeline. I think the loopholes are still there uh, for um, for those countries that seem this this um, project commercially conflicting with their own economic interest to block uh, the the pipeline development. Uh, there are of course other issues as well, such as um, infrastructure and capacity uh, on the Azeri side or the general makeup of the energy markets uh, and what's happening now in uh, Europe in terms of demand. So um, I don't think that we're seeing uh, clarity in terms of the business, in terms of those um, projects that, uh, for example, European Union has been very much interested in, 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 in diversifying its imports away from Russian energy supplies. Uh, so we, and, and the fact that there will be yet another summit indicates that critical issues have not been ironed out yet. Stanislav, you, you heard uh, Lilith speak about this issue at length right now. The fact of the matter is there really is not much clarity at the moment. Uh, the, the agreement or the aspects of the agreement that we've been told about is fairly vaguely worded at the moment. I mean, the devil is really in the details here. Is there any chance by which this would fall through? Uh, first of all, I uh, fully agree with the previous speaker about the bad economy of such kind of project because Transcaspian pipeline will be very, very expensive project uh, and uh, I don't know what will uh, the cost of the gas which will be de delivered from Turkmenistan through Transcaspian pipeline through Azerbaijan, Georgia, Turkey to the Europe. So it will be a gold uh, gas. Uh, returning to the legal framework, uh, in the end of July was agreed the special protocol uh, regarding the uh, big infrastructure projects such as Transcaspian pipeline, the big uh, shelf projects with production more than 500 tons a, a year a day, uh, uh, refinery plants. So all of these uh, ob uh, objects, all of these projects should be uh, agreed by all uh, sides, by all parties. And uh, this protocol sets uh, up very clear and transparent procedures how uh, parties should do it. For example, Azerbaijan and Turkmenistan are going to construct a Transcaspian pipeline. They uh, should uh, give all information about this project, about this characteristic, about this capacity, about uh, uh, trajectory, geographical trajectory. After that, uh, all countries have will have right to request any additional uh, measures to protect environment. And uh, in three months, all countries should. Uh, uh, organize within th three months countries should organize a special session for consultation so it means that now Russia and Iran cannot uh, stop such kind of project but they will have all information about uh, about this project and uh, will have rights to uh, ask uh, 
the participants of this project to improve uh, measures for protection of our environment. And this position is very close to the Russian official line. The main uh, mm -hmm. goal of Russian uh, Russian position mm -hmm. towards uh, Trans-Caspian pipeline was environment. Uh, these concerns about uh, pollution, about because this is a very uh, Stanislav, Stanislav, very dangerous I'm, from the earthquake. Stanislav, from I'm, the, I'm sorry the, to I'm sorry to interrupt. It's just that we're we're starting to run short on time, and I wanna I wanna follow up a point you were making with uh, with Fuad. We're talking about the diplomacy around this. Uh, there are diplomats. Uh, that have called this a regional constitution. That's what they're alluding to when they talk about this convention that was signed, this agreement. So I want to ask you if you think that that's a correct interpretation. And also, does this set up a new regional alliance? It, it is an agreement. Uh, constitution generally refers to national internal uh, legislations and, and, and guidelines. Uh, I think this is more of an agreement, but I do agree uh, that, and this is one reason Iran was interested in this, that creating uh, uh, Iran being part of regional setups is going to be very important for Iran in uh, years to come. That's another reason Iran wants to uh, join uh, the Shanghai uh, Cooperation uh, Council and, and other regional uh, uh, bodies that basically protect Iran uh, from uh, pressures that Iran may be receiving from the United States or other hostile um, powers, because if Iran is part of a bigger uh, regional uh, accord or agreement, then uh, the United States or whoever is having difficulties with Iran has to deal with these other countries, not just Iran. So uh, this, this becomes very important for Iran, and this was actually the main reason Iran uh, went along with, uh, with the agreement. Uh, so I do agree that uh, this is going to be a, 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 a beginning step for a, a, a Caspian regional cooperation among the countries that surround it. Lilith, what do you foresee this meaning for the global oil and gas market? Um, I, I have to say that um, what we're seeing is just an agreement in principle. Um, there are a number of factors uh, that will determine uh, the future of, of pipelines, both gas and oil pipelines, coming from Central Asia uh, through the Caspian Sea. Uh, th th there are a number of uh, factors and uh, developments in the global energy market will, that would determine the uh, commercial viability of these projects. But above all, since we're talking about the recent convention on Caspian Sea, I will highlight again that there's still a lot of questions unanswered. There's still uh, no clarity uh, when it comes to the mechanism of, for example, disputing a challenge from littoral state. There is still no clarity about the delimination of the, uh, the, of the seabed. So uh, I would uh, remain hesitant to make any comments about the contribution of, of uh, 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 oil and gas to global markets from Central Asia via these uh, pipelines. I think it will take a, a, a while to see any of these pro projects to materialize. Stanislav, very quickly, because we just have about 30 seconds, you were alluding to the environmental impact of all this a moment ago. So just very quickly, I want to ask you, do you believe that this convention will help when it comes to pollution or will ultimately hurt when it comes to pollution in the Caspian? So, uh, according to this convention and according to the uh, current practice of cooperation, countries now have experience to cooperate together to, to work with any pollution and any uh, accidents. So I think now uh, Caspian 5 can protect the environment altogether. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much to all our guests, Stanislav Pritchin, Fuad Izadi, and Lilith Gavorgian. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. For me, Mohammed Jamjoum, and the whole team here, bye for now.